Hello, you are live on the Archie Luxury channel. And today I have got an absolute, absolute treat, the treat of treats. And uh, I, I tell you what, you know, when you talk about your wrist, wrist watch idols, wrist watch, quick wrist watch check, and we're in the Polar Explorer 2. Wrist watch idols. My wristwatch idols, there can be no other. If I, if someone said to me, who would I like to have in a room and have dinner with? There'd be, um, there'd be, there'd be the Stearns, the dad, Philippe and Terry. There'd be, um, I'd have some bozo from Rolex. And then <laughs> I, I would have Ariel Adams, a blog to watch. There is nobody higher off than having Ariel Adams there. If I, if, if someone said to me I could invite anyone, anyone living or dead, Ariel Adams would be there. And I, I got to tell you, I got to pinch myself, pinch myself that this guy is actually talking to me. I'm, I'm just completely honored. This is, this is royalty in the world watch community this is royalty ariel adams thank you Hi. so much for coming to the archie luxury channel archie thank you so much that was probably the most flattering introduction i've ever had in my life when there is an opening for the uh dire director of communication and the ariel adam uh, ariel adams incorporated you have that job no doubt hey Thank you. Now, just, just, I just want to tell you, I am a stylish dude. I don't know if you know this. You are a stylish guy. I, I've got my, my, my Explorer 2 on, and I've got my, my spring roll sauce stain. I went out for spring rolls. And, is that uh, what that is? Yeah, I got, I, got, I got stain all over my shirt. Have you, <laughs> ever, have you ever had the experience where you're having a meal, and for some, whatever happens, sauce gets on your watch, and you're not sure what to do about it? Oh, I just like, licked that off. That's okay. You lick it off. Really? I just stared at it. I'm like, do I, <laughs> do I go to the bathroom and rinse it off? Do I wipe it away? It's a, That's it's a, a good it's point. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Um, it, so is this live? Meaning we have listeners right now? We are live now. We are live. Yes, we are, sir. We are live. So you're seeing we comments and people like that? Well, well, I'm actually not. I'm just concentrating on, on talking to you. I mean, I mean, I'm talking to a demigod. I, I can't. I can't. I just... Just gotta, I just can only do so many things at one time there, Ariel. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just not used to talking to someone of your caliber. Because oh, I'm so at the cool. other end of the wristwatch industry, you know. I'm, I'm at the other end. You know, I'm the second hand end. I'm the, <laughs> the bargain shopper on eBay. That's, that's the end I'm at. So you're at the retail new end. I'm... I, I'm like the 13-year-old 7 Series BMW that no one really wants. Well, you know what? I want to say something. You said eBay. I'll tell you what. You never graduate out of eBay. You start with eBay, and you always mm. keep eBay next to you close because eBay is a good friend. eBay is a good friend. eBay is a good friend. Um, I wanted to say thank you as well to you for doing an interview with me a little while ago. I think that has like uh, like twenty thousand people have listened to that. It gave me so much credibility, Ariel. I got to tell you, credibility. I had so much credibility. I mean, I've done an interview with Ariel Adams. Next, I'll have the Pope on my channel. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, what did that? What did that give you? What could you now do after that interview that you couldn't do before? Oh, I, I got cred. I got. I got cred. I'm. I'm. I'm a serious. I mean. I mean, everyone knows the Archie Luxury take on things is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit, it's, it's not what the conservative Swiss would approve of, okay? Right, right. Let me, I was going to say, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say to you, I'm quite trendy. You see behind me, see that cabinet there? I do. That came from Ikea. Uh, it's very nice. You know who else has got one? Uh, an Ikea cabinet? Yes. You know who else? Uh, 
I, I'd like to know. Houdinki's got one. An Ikea cabinet. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I, I watched one of Houdinki's videos, and in his, in his prestigious room, he's got the same Ikea cabinet I've got. Isn't, isn't Nomos kind of like the Ikea of the watch world? Yeah, it is. It could, could be. You could argue right. that. Style-wise? It could be. It could. Well, this is kind of industrial metal. It's supposed to be 1950s industrialism. It looks I like very practical. It. I, got, I, I put my watch boxes in there because I like to keep the dust off them. And, you know, you can put a, few, put a few watches in there. You know what I want someone to invent a solution to? The problem of having too many watch boxes. You can't throw them away. Sometimes they're too oh, nice. Oh, no, no, no. They're very valuable. They're valuable. So what do you very do with valuable. them? They just take up an awful lot of space. What does one do with them? Can you bury them in the backyard? Well, you wouldn't dare throw them away because you might need it again when you wanted to eBay it, couldn't you? I, I have to admit, I have sinned. I have to confess to you. Mm. I have thrown away perhaps too many watch boxes in my life. You're joking. Like what? <sighs> it, it got to a point, I have to say, Archie, where it wasn't mm -hmm. really a choice any longer. It was... I couldn't move in my office. I, I got to tell you something. You know, I've unfortunately I am a bit of a hoarder. I don't know if you can see behind me there. I've got expensive open champagne on my shelf. Oh, is that open? That's not closed champagne. <laughs> That's all been drunk a long time ago. <laughs> and you know, I still kept the bottle as a reminder. I got an Ace of Spades, two Dom. Pe I, I'll never be able to buy this stuff again. And yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes you can hoard too much, can't you? You know, they have these companies now, these storage companies that come to your home or your office and they just take like, pick up and deliver. Mm. And so you can you can literally be a hoarder but not have to have it at your home. They've made hoarding so easy these days. And Ariel, I got to tell you, the, the biggest problem in the watch industry is that makers, particularly Omega and Patek, they used to have a very small watch box. And I think it was Philippe Stern who said, we make watches, we don't make boxes. He, that's what he <laughs> said angrily. Yeah, he's, not, he's not in charge anymore, now is he? And I've got to tell you, the, the thinking is the bigger the better. Remember Cartier went through this phase where they had mammoth boxes? Yes. Omega, you get the Speedmaster now, you get a huge, you get a tomb. You can get buried in hold, it. Hold on. That was a very good reason of charging another $1,000, though. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, I, I remember that conversation with them. They were like, we're going to charge $1,000 more. However, we have this amazing presentation case to look at. It. And, and they were very impressed with it. But I just remember thinking in my head, okay, Omega, I, and I love Omega, but yes. if you want to increase the price of something by $1,000, don't just give it a nicer box. Yes, I know. I know exactly. You, you know, the terrible thing is, is that um, actually, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I will. Many years ago, I bought this paddock. It was actually a 3944 Calatrava, which is a quartz Calatrava. Warren Buffet has that same model. I, I will add as well. No, he hasn't appeared on my channel, by the way, Ariel. Not yet. Not yet. And I actually wrote to Patek jokingly and said, um, dear, 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 dear Stearns, uh, I think I wrote to Philippe, dear Philippe, it, it, I, I really would love to give this watch to the next, I've, I, 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 don't, I agree, I don't actually own this watch. My ancestors are going to say to me, what is all this white crap that's encased onto the paddock, which they're presented with? I said, the box is disintegrated. The interior is gone. That sticky, you know, that sticky, very sticky, horrid where it peels off. Uh-huh. And uh, they did actually send me a new box. Oh, so that was a there success. Well, I got a free box out of them. Is that a success? Yeah. yeah. They responded to you. They re not yeah. here, they re That was a customer service success story. Granted, yes. it didn't take a lot for them to make you happy. But at least no, they didn't no. ignore you. Very, very true. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird now. I got to tell you. You remember 
the reason why so many collectibles are valuable, like you look at these old Rolexes, the reason they're so valuable is because the numbers made were so much smaller than today. And people didn't buy them as collectibles. They bought them to use as a watch. I mean, going back in time, you know, when you used to go to Patek Philippe, they gave you a lend watch to wear when your watch was being serviced. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had a steel version of the ellipse, which was, was meant to be like a, a watch to, you could use whilst your watch. It was like a, a lend Mercedes. You take your Mercedes in for a service. They give you a loaner. So we're the big of the street. It doesn't matter what watch you sent them. They would send you an ellipse. No, no, no. Well, it had to be a paddock, of course. I know. They I gave know, you a paddock. But the it ellipse was a steel. Was the loaner. Who was that watch even yeah. made for? Oh, the ellipse was that was that that was supposed to be the most beautiful. It came out in the late sixties. But you who, know like, the ellipse that circular. Yeah, but who was the target demographic? I don't know if that was for men or women or I have no idea. Who was that made for? Well, it was made for rich people. But what type of rich person? Like, when would you wear that? Rich people, rich people who thought they were cool. But see, that, that's, that's sort of my underlying argument behind you a know, watch. It's like the that. Same, people, same people who bought the Rolls Royce, the Rolls Royce Corniche, you know, the convertible Rolls Royce? Uh, yes, yes. Cool car. Those same, those same people would buy the Ellipse. Maybe. I mean, there's. You're right. And, it's a, it's a and, very niche demographic. And did you know, I'll tell you another bit of gossip. You may not know this, but they had a special version of the ellipse with a papal dial. These were ones given to big donors of the Catholic Church. You could be given an ellipse. With you know, a, I've, I think I've seen some of those. Yes, you... You had to be very. You had to give a lot of money to actually get one of these. Could you, you imagine? Had to be the most pious donor of the Catholic Church. Yes, yes. Huh. I think I think Frank Sinatra said he would give half his wealth to the church if he could have an interview with the Pope. How'd that work out? Well, I, I, well, he, they possibly would have given him an ellipse then, wouldn't it? That's I think sort you of get, at the very least you should get a watch out of it. Look, you know what? I have to say, you know, most of the time, if you're going to donate money, you don't get anything nice in return. Maybe that's why the Catholic Church has been around for so long. They just give nice stuff in return. I just get controversial. I don't know anything about religion. Now, 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 I got to tell you. Speaking of gifts, speaking of gifts, did you know? You know, I actually. This is a. This is a little bit of. I'll give you a little bit of gossip here. I had a friend of mine who knew somebody who knew Dodi Fayed. Dodi Fayed, in case you don't know, that was the Princess boyfriend Di, of Princess, Princess Di. Diana. She, yeah. He's the guy, his father owns Harrods. Right. He used to have, he lived on a, a boat on the Thames, okay? He had about 10 Rolex day dates who he would give to people as gifts, like if he really liked you. Like if you were influential to him. So have you, heard, have you heard about Hussein, Saddam Hussein, what he would do with watches? No, tell me this story. Tell me, tell me. So he took it a step further. So yes. I don't know if he was the first one to do this, but he mm -hmm. was one of the guys to do this. It was something that was like a trend among, um, I'll just use the word dictator. And yes. what you would do yes. is you go to a, a Swiss watchmaker and yes. you would order watches as gifts for your inner circle that had your face on it. Yes, 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 yes. So the coat would, of arms. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. So you well, the face is different. So you would give people close to you a watch that they had to wear that had your face. So every single time they stared at their watch, they looked at your face yes. as a reminder. I'm watching you. You have to wear my face. Think about how demeaning that is. You have to wear another man's face on your wrist, and it's not your choice. But it is a paddock. Do you want a free paddock? I'd do it. I know. You're right. Nice watch. Another man's face. It's quite it's quite um, interesting there because a lot of these dictators who we see as evil, nasty dictators, they were friends with some of the big Swiss Gaddafi. makers of all time. You know this, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you dictators, know, they, had, they were all about image, right? You got to appeal to the oh, people. Oh, yes. So you got to have yes. slick stuff. Yes. So to what, what tell me, the, your, yeah, I just want to know your favorite dictator watches. Ah, oh, ah, oh, look, 
Look, I, I, I really, you can't go past Idi Amin. What did he, he have? Huge, I think he had a president, Rolex president, guy. president, yeah, president, president. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of the choice of the dictator, isn't it? I love how somehow we know definitively that a solid yeah. gold president looks good in the jungle. How else would we know yeah. that <laughs> if it wasn't for guys like that? Anyways, go on. That's it. Now, I, 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 I wanted to um, – actually, I, I was going to – I was going to – look, this is, this, is, this is going quite nicely. I was going to bring up, bring up some of my watches, bring them yeah. up. You can say whatever you want about them. You have – Autonomy. There's no. There's no. I cannot be offended. In fact, but hold I would on. Hold on. I have a question. Like it? Yes. I yes. have a question. You yes, may yes. not be offended, but you have a fiercely loyal audience. Okay, your audience loves look, you. Look. What What would I do if I accidentally got on your audience's bad side by offending one of your watches inadvertently? I I you look. you I I can understand, but your audience they love you. They stand behind you. Look, I think we're all big enough here. Because my watches aren't perfect. I bought them secondhand. I I'm a secondhand shopper. So That's okay. without further ado, let's have a look here. And uh, the first one on the screen is my <clears throat> world time. It's the zero. What do you think of this piece? That's a In good yellow question. Gold. That's a good question. First of all, I am a yellow gold guy too. Um, I prefer yes. yellow gold from my skin tone than rose gold. And I think up until recently, it was like, where did all the yellow gold go? Uh, I have to say that most yes. versions of this watch I find too small for my wrists. Um, yep. You know, it's a complication that isn't exactly unique to Patek, right? Like a lot of people have the same complication. So it's, yeah. it's you know, it's, it's one that we associate with Patek, especially in this two-hand form. But they have more complicated versions. I have to say, this this exists among the list of Patek watches that I could for 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 foreseeably see myself in, enjoying. That sounds super snobby, but I'm not a big Patek guy. There's certain ones I like. Probably a bigger one than this. Um, I do like yep. the yeah. This is the, the dial seven mil. The thirty seven mil. Because because they you remember this is the five one one zero. They had the five two three zero, which was thirty nine point five. Sorry, five one three zero, which was thirty nine point five. Then they've gone back to thirty eight point five with the five two three zero. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I, I, I'm not that good with numbers, so I don't remember watches by named that have numbers. Like it's so hard for me to remember. So Patek people, they just talk numbers all the time. So world time yes. right now with the numbers, I never remember. So I like. Now let me ask you: Is this a authentically guilloche engraved dial or is this one of the stamped ones or do you know i think it is an authentic i think it is the authentic guilloche dial oh. i think it I is, think that's a nice this, is look. this is yeah it's actually some people actually really prefer they say out of all the world times in modern times like 2000 onwards this has probably got the nicest guilloche type dial yeah, I mean, look. So it, you like it? it, it you like it? Well. Photograph. Give me well. an opinion. Give me an. Give me an opinion. What do you think of this piece? I think that a watch like this is probably one of your most defining watches, right? If I had to think of a watch that defines you, I mean, maybe the yeah. others are slightly more appropriate, but this has got to be up there. Sure. This is this okay. is uh, okay. this okay. is no. a real Archie no, watch. I wear this every day. No, that's that's um, that's really 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 cool to um to hear you say that. Now I'm going to pull up another one. We're going to pull up another one. We're just going to go through these quickly. We don't want to we don't want to go we don't want to we don't want to drag the chain too much here. We just want to bring some great watches up and just drag them. the chain. What a now, great term. <laughs> <laughs> I just hear it. You know, I hear like yeah. the chain dragging. Horrible sound. Exactly. Exactly. Now here we go. You tell me what you think of this baby here. Oh, the it's the pretend 20. brigade. The pretend breguet. Pretend? It's for the breguet you have when you can't really afford a bre Okay. I I'm know being why sarcastic. You, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, it's look, not I'm a column wheel chronograph. That's the thing oh, about oh, it. It's a cam. The four, this is the 40 millimeter, right? 39, actually. It's 39. I remember I almost had a chance one time to buy this watch on a bracelet in all yellow gold. Yes. For like... Fourteen thousand bucks, and I was like, "That 
was like at the edge of affordability. Like I just yes. like I didn't do yeah. it. It was just a lot of money. No, no, I that's mean, okay. Yeah, especially since I knew it was the Type Twenty One would be my yep. choice. But this okay. is the first Breguet I ever fell in love with. This is the first one. This is still, or at least a version of this, is still on my wish list. I think this is one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful, pilot chronograph watch <clears throat> ever. Um, I just think it has a really nice mixture of, I'll call it sex appeal and functionality. I really wish Breguet did anything even remotely related to marketing or development of this collection. The Type 22 went into a direction that was just like cool but unaffordable. Yes. You know, um, this is like the weird, estranged child of Breguet that they're not sure what mm. to do with. I I wish they did more, but, um, you know, this is this is a great timepiece. I mean, it's not for everyone, but it's it's hard to fault this. Like, it, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a steel sports watch. Um, but, you know, if you fall in love with a watch like this, this is a great start. I'm really interested to hear you say that. these photos these are the actual watches uh-huh you know what I, I was never a chronograph person in early 2000s i was helping somebody a dealer sell some watches for a bit of commission right yeah and he he, he gave me this breguet type 20 to sell it was an Aaron Vale, no date and that's why i fell in love with chronographs i thought whoa this is so cool this is so cool. What, what is it? I, I'd actually owned a Breguet before. I'd owned a Breguet in 1999. I bought it in a white gold one, which really didn't impress me that much. I just bought it and flicked it for, for a couple hundred bucks profit, $400 profit. Good for you. But, but when I saw this Breguet here, I wanted it. You know, the, those, those Art Deco numerals. I know. The coin I, I, edging. You're you're preaching the choir, man. I fell in love with this design 10, 15 years ago, and I've always loved it, and I've always looked out for one. And it's, you know, you can get a deal on it, but it's still like, well, for the Type 20, it's it's a little bit less. But for the Type 21, like, it's still like a eight dollars $9,000 watch. Like, it's up there. But this is great. Me, I think more people need to be. Do you want me to tell you what I, do you want me to tell you what I paid for it? Uh, it sounds like you want to brag a little bit. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just telling you honestly. I'm just telling you honestly. I, I'm, You're I'm, I'm make jealous now because I'm going to be upset because I don't have one. Come on. No, no, no. They're affordable. But they're, they're not that, as you said, they're not that well marketed. They're, they're, they're awful. It's a shame how poorly marketed they are. I got this one on a bracelet, right? The only problem yeah. is it belonged to a midget in a circus. Okay. Had the small, world's smallest wrist. Every bloody link had been removed. Okay. Oh, and you couldn't get any more links? No, I actually, the bracelet's currently with Breguet to try and get more links. You know, they charge $180 <laughs> per link. See, Breguet thinks prestige, ripping your punter off. Okay. <laughs> Breguet yeah. thinks that's how you do prestige. Oh, and they're right. That it, is how you do prestige. It's like Cartier. They, they think you just hold out for six months doing anything, and that, that's what you call friendship. I, I want to I say right now, and announce right now, probably never going to do this, but I... <laughs> If I had a luxury brand, I would just type, I would just name the entire brand unaffordable. Just <laughs> unaffordable. That's what you would call the brand. It'd be very yeah. to the point. Everything okay, I'll tell you. Affordable. I paid thirty five hundred US for this watch. It's not a bad deal. That's, that's on a super super small bracelet. Okay, the bracelet. I must admit, it's it's costing me a thousand dollars to get the links to, to fit. I mean, what does that what does that cost on eBay right now? Like, what can you get this for? Uh, eBay's look. I actually got it from a dealer in Japan called E Lady. E Lady, huh? Yeah, they kind of had a coupon discount. It was thirty six. Then I had ten percent off if you use a coupon. I think it cost me uh, yeah, about that's all the best watch deals. They really do, and they're clean. They're clean. No, no box so and clean. papers, so but clean. so just never. Wore, I, I think it belonged to a geisha. Some some Japanese businessman gave it to a geisha, and she okay, didn't know what the hell. One exactly. Like what you're showing me now, slightly different strap, uh, yep. almost forty four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Here's one on the bracelet, forty five hundred dollars. 
Yeah. yeah, you got a you got a you got a sweet deal, my friend. Look, I, I did get a good deal, but what I'm saying is that that's not that that's not a lot of money, is it? For f under five grand on a bracelet for a breguet. Look, that that one that I was telling you about, that was that good deal, that one that was like four, thirteen or fourteen thousand. That was in Japan. I got to tell you, those gold ones, the breguet in gold, it just pops. It is amazing if you see it in gold. Oh, I know, but, I know. But it's amazing also, because it's that black. It's the black dial, that black black dial, and that like chunky yellow gold case and bracelet. Oh, but they also did it in platinum. Did you know that? Seriously? Yeah, yeah, platinum? yeah. And with a salmon dial, you could also get a salmon dial on it. I've seen the salmon dial. I did not know it came in mm. platinum. Mm. There's, there's mm. blue dials too. Very rare blue dials. Yep. Yep. I, I got to tell you, I, I think the black, if you're just buying it, just buying one, I think the black is cool. It's, 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 it is, it is a, you know, nothing wrong with a traditional sports watch. It uses a Lamania movement because, you know, it's owned by Swatch Group now. Yeah. But Lamania, I mean, a lot of these very expensive vintage Pateks use Lamania type movement. So it's that's not the end of the world. It's, it's not like an ETA movement in it, is it? I mean, okay, let me ask you. Well, this is this is your show. I don't want me to ask the questions. I'll just say this. I appreciate a nice watch movement. I really, really do. But I do not discriminate a basic movement if it's all about functionality. It would be like getting upset because like a Honda engine doesn't look pretty. It's a Honda mm. engine. It's meant not to break mm. down. It's not mm. meant to look pretty. It's meant to perform well. Mm. So an mm. Etta is like a Honda. I get it. You don't you don't you don't think it has prestige and someone didn't, you know, touch it with a file for forty five minutes. That's fine. But don't knock it because of what it is. You can maybe get upset at someone for putting it in a super expensive watch, but some watches, the value is in the dial and the case and the bracelet, not in the movement. That's okay. I don't know why everyone mm. has to hyper-focus on the movement all the time. I, I agree 100%. You're 100% you're, you're, you're right. And, and I mean, going back many years ago, everyone criticizes Valju ETA. You know, the uh, the really expensive Daytonas, they had a Valjoux movement, the 727 movement in them. Everyone yeah. used other movements. Patek used a lot of, it wasn't such a big sin back then. Now it seems, oh, if you're using an ETA movement, that's a shitter. You know, it, it, it's very, very, very nasty. The next piece, Ariel, this is my... Reverso. Is, what do you think? This is a Reverso Grand Date. <sighs> How big is this one? Like, what's the diameter? It's It's... It's 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 actually quite thick, and it's also big. I I, I don't know the exact measurement. I, I don't have it. I don't have. But it's it, but it, it, in all different kinds of size. And what's on the other side? No, well, it's it's actually got the display movement. Okay, so this is so this is this has got the eight day power reserve. Yeah, the the double, manually, manually wound or automatic. Yeah. Manual wind, manual wind. I I think a reverso should be manual wind. That's just my opinion. You, you know this watch here. A watch dealer friend, a guy who worked in the watch dealer, he had this on his wrist. I said to him, I will pay you $1,000 more than you paid for it whenever you want to sell it. I said, this watch is just amazing. Do you know when this watch is from? Yep, yep, yep. It's actually a box paper. This is uh, early 2000s, 2003, yeah. 2003. You know, the first thing that is very fascinating to me about this is, is I call this a pre-Richemont one. I don't think it is actually pre-Richemont. I don't remember when Richemont bought it, but... The dial has the brand logo in a very diminutive position in the subsidiary mm -hmm. seconds dial. It actually says Reverso. Yes. The, the branding hungry notion and the mentality at those companies in more recent times never to me would have allowed something like this. I think that maybe begrudgingly oh. if they had to do it, but they never would have allowed such a small um, – a small dial ah. or a small logo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like Mercedes Benz not having a car with the star on the front. Yeah, exactly. Like it's there. You Don't know, get me I wrong, see. But it's it's yeah, so yeah, 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 It's yeah. so not about the brand name, and there's something mm. nice about that. You know what I mean? Well, what do you think of this watch? What do you think of this watch? Um, I look. I I like this for a few reasons. One, I think it's really really hard to do a case which is not round. Like there's a few mm. success mm. stories, like mm. the Cartier Santos, for example. That's a that's a well done non-round watch. Mm. Yes. The reverse yes. 
Um, you know, there's a few of them. There's just not that many. And I remember I was vicious there, and they showed me this, uh, I guess, a visual experiment. You see how on each side of the case, so there's three uh, deeply cut lines, those grooves, those, th yes. those three parallel yes, lines? Yes, yes. They said, check this out, and they showed me the case without those, and it like completely didn't look like it. The entire identity of that watch is in those six lines. <laughs> um, Good point. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing to me. Yes. It did impress me that Jager, mm -hmm. unlike most of these brands, does make these cases themselves, and mm. that they remain for a long time... Um, a relatively good deal given the value, especially given what other similar brands were charging, right? Like you were getting mm -hmm. a lot of watch for the money here, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I think the prices mm -hmm. were still high, but you were getting a decent value, especially compared to like, I don't know, I mean, like a Blanc Pond. You're getting so mm -hmm. much more value, you mm -hmm. know? Yes. Um, yes. It's, I like symmetrical dials personally, right? Like, that's, yeah. and that's just a matter mm -hmm. of taste. There's mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah, no, 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 I understand. You know? So for me, you know, I, I, I see those things and it's a little bit of asymmetry and I'm like, oh, um, I've always liked this dial. It's, it's, it's very legible given what it is. And it has personality, you know, this mm. is for a type of person who, mm. you know, when everything made you feel something, right? They were, when they were designing stuff like this, it was, it was part of, part of the thing is you wanted to make nice things and it needed to make you feel good, right? And there's mm. there's a structure to this design. There's a structure to the way it shows time. It's for a very controlled existence. People that like control, mm. people that like feeling a sense of structure in their life, I think that a watch like this is great for them, right? Because yes, it's playful, but like everything is very mm -hmm. rigidly about a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is flamboyantly crazy for the ultra conservative crowd. That's what this ah, is. Flamboyantly okay. crazy if you're amazingly conservative. <laughs> okay. Fair, fair. Look, that is a that's a that's a now I'm gonna pick another piece here. We're just gonna go through these quickly. I, I, I don't want when to get um, bored of we get bored of my uh, my feedback, you just change it up. No, 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 no. It's cool. It is fan this is fantastic. This is this is you you you're the guru. You're the guru's guru. This is this is where I go. What do you think of this one here? Why do you think of that's this here? 40? This is the IWC, it's the Ingenua, the Ingi, and this is actually this is actually the forty-two and point five. This is the one. Oh, this is the old old one. This is the one with the in-house eight hundred one one zero movement. Oh, what a weird watch! And you can say anything you want. Say anything you want there, but look, I want to show you something. This one here, the forty, didn't have. Look at the dial. Look at that dial. The pattern. That is expensive to do. Look at that. Um, the, uh, yeah, you're you're right. I mean, look, it's not a cheaply made watch. Look, I've always liked the idea of what the Ingenieur collection was. Hmm. Um, I think that it was a clever name. I think that IWC could have done a lot with it. I think it had a good history. And just like the original, you know, this one flopped in the marketplace, just like the original Ingenua SLs. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of a personality, the IWC. No mm. matter how hard they try, I've never really been able to 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 hold on to right. Like they've never been able to prove to anyone yeah. that they're they're the types of company, the type of company that makes this product. I think there's been a lot of merit to these watches. I think that one of the things about this watch that I that I've always admired is it looks very. Um, I'm trying to think of the right term. It's there, there's a, there's a youthfulness to it, I guess you could say. Like it's the type of watch that I would be very excited about as a teenager. I got to tell you, when I bought this watch, I actually before I bought it, I went and read your review on it. I think you did a review. This is the three seven three two two seven dash zero one. Uh huh. The forty two and a half. This has got the this has got the iron cast, the iron clad yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah, because it's magnet. It's shielded from magnetism. exactly. So uh, I I actually went to your review. I read what you said about it. And uh, I got to tell you, IWC is a brand which they made it smaller and cheaper, and they put an ETA movement in it. They use the three zero one one zero movement in the, no, this, the later this ones. Is, this is like a unicorn watch, man. I mm. mean, this is you know you found something cool, but there's so few of this stuff out there. Mm. Like this is what the brand needs to be doing more of. They need to take this. They need to. Why don't they do that? Oh, why? They, why did they go for more? They don't understand how to reach guys like you and like me. They have no idea. 
They mm. they don't know how to they don't really know how to market anything. We're the most difficult type of consumer to reach, and we're finicky. We're like the guys that go to like comic book movies and know like all the canon. The the the, oh, the no. movie companies will never be able to please those guys completely. They'll always complain about something. So what do you think you know of this I mean? watch? I like it. This this particular one is as you Actually, know. Quite this unique. came from Japan. This came from Japan. This one here, box it. papers. Receipt. It was bought from the boutique for eight hundred and fifty-five thousand yen in two thousand and twelve. What do you wear this with? Do you wear this with short sleeves, long sleeves? Like, how do you wear anything this you want? Anything you want. It's, it's legible. Big. It's big. It's. I mean, hey, hey, you know, um, Look, this. It's got, it's got. You know, I for me. I have to say, I've never said this before, ever, yeah, ever. Yeah, I've yeah. never said this before, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, but I'm feeling it for the first time right now. Mm. There are too many fonts on the dial. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen mm -hmm. guys say that about other things, and I've almost never agreed with them. But now I look no. at this, and I'm like, You're why right. are there so many fonts? fonts? The script of, of, of the numerals, you've got IWC, you've got Schaffenhausen, you've got Ingenua, you've got Swiss Made. How many different Don't fonts? Don't forget the date. Don't forget the date. Oh, yes. Uh, how many different fonts <laughs> can we possibly use? This is like someone who's just got – you remember those uh, those horrible laser jet printers where you had yeah. one font, Courier, built in, right? And then okay. someone got a job in an office with a Mac and they had postscript printers. <laughs> they had every font you could want. And it was the Remember most amazing that? thing in the world. Yeah, they, but they, they had to use every damn font in every letter they sent, every font just to show, hey, I got fonts. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're right. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I do agree. Now I'm going to show you another piece. Let's have a look. We're going to go through the well, – coming to an end. I'm not that – I'm not that well off. So we, we are coming to an end. The steam train is coming in. This is um, the steam train is coming into the station and we'll, we'll, uh, we're coming to an end soon. At least I think we are. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Well, this is, this is, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I just want the train to abruptly stop. Now you made me feel all like, you know. Oh, no, there's heaps of other things we can show. What, what do you think of this? Right now? Yes, the Explorer 2, the Polar. What do you think? Tell me what you think. Tell First me what you thing think. I want to say is I've always had a soft spot for white dialed sports watches. I have a mm. number of them. Um, Don't tell the Paneristes. Don't tell the Paneristes that. They have a few of them, I guess. But they, they say that's the kiss of death is the white dial in the Panerai. The kiss of death? You have to explain that mm. to me. What does that even mean? Well, they're just not wanted. Nobody wants a white dial Panerai. I don't know why. So they sell it like the price the Panerai should actually cost? No, well, just that it's hard to resell to any other Paneristes. They just, they just. Ah, oh, those poor things. You know? <laughs> but I agree with you. I think the white dial is super cool. And this is 40 mil. I'll tell you, you what, I, I strongly looked at and considered getting the new 42 millimeter Explorer 2. Um, Beautiful watch. Beautiful and, watch. And, and multiple people that I know own it with the black dial. And mm. I like the white dial more. However, Archie, would you like to know why I will not ever buy that watch with those hands? Why is that? Why is that? Tell me. They're too shiny. They went from these uh, wonderful matte black hands mm -hmm. that were fantastic. And then and then Rolex decided, and again, they don't make their own hands. Rolex has a supplier, so this is the supplier's fault. They made shiny, sl slightly shiny hands on the Explore 2 42 millimeter. Mm. And, and I, I, I can't look past it. I just can't. I, I love Rolex too much to see bad-looking hands. I have mm. other Rolex watches. Don't have bad hands. I have two Submariners. I have my uh, my Datejust uh, 41. Okay? Yeah. Right hands. Yep. Okay, but when it comes to black hands, this is the white dialed Rolex that did the hands correctly. Mm. Love the bezel, the finishing. I love the the polished edge, the brushed and the polished yep. edge. Really yeah, nice no, detail in person. It, it, it's a nice. It's a. It is a cool watch. It is that. that I I agree with you, one hundred percent. There. But now I want to say this. I want to say this. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 What What was the retail price of that watch when it first? came out well they when you say they first came out in 1972 you're talking so or you generation 
Okay, that generation, so 16.570, they came out in, they originally had the 16.550, which could come in white dial, black dial, or ivory colored dial. That's very, very collectible. So that version that I've got, the 16.570 came out in the late 90s, like I think about 97, I think. Okay. I think the retail price was about four or five grand. Four or five grand? Okay, let's just say four and a half grand. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, okay. Sure. That is sure. a good deal today at four and a half yes. grand. That is great, right? Yes. But now, yes. like, what does the Explorer 2 cost? Like 7,500 or something? Yes. Okay. It's it's starting to be a lot of money for what it is. Actually, I tell you what I'm going to do. You just keep talking there, Ariel. I'm going to do okay. something in the background. You just keep talking I there. Talk what about I, there's, actually, no, there's, there's actually there is actually a fantastic website which you can go to, and uh, you can type in the value of value of four thousand five hundred in nineteen eighty seven. I think it, it was 97. Me. Didn't you say 97? 87, 87. They came out in 87, that wild oh, so model. 87 at $4,000? 4, uh, 4000 US, okay? In 1987, in, that would be the same. 87, what were we talking 87, about? 87, 87, 87. Actually, let's just, let's just double check this. $4,000 in 1987 would be the equivalent of 8739 today. Really? Mm, this is the inflation calculator. Wow, inflation is so real. So to give you an idea, right, um, I, I know my dad bought a house in 1971 for 11,000 bucks. With explorers? Explorers. That's what so I'd they, like to do. I want my dream one day is to buy a mm -hmm. house and I pay for it in watches. I, I know someone that. who did that. I know someone who almost did that. Yes. I know yes, someone that yes. did that, but I'm not allowed to say who it is. But they ran a Swiss watch company. Ah, uh, ah, someone got stuck with a whole lot of chrono Swisses, I bet, hey? <laughs> no, no. They this is when the joke. brand was this is joke. when a, this is when the brand uh, was hot and uh, they basically bought a house in Switzerland they paid for watches. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, as I was saying to you there, I've just got to pull up one more watch for you to have a look at there. This is the, uh, okay, so you haven't said anything negative or nasty. That's what I, I've I, been honest uh, with you. Honestly, I, look, okay, I don't own, okay. I don't own these okay. watches. So these are things that, and I'm, I'm being frank, like the, the white dial Explorer 2 in the 40 millimeter. Yeah. I find that watch by today's standards to have like the clasp, for example, is super old school. Yeah, um, you're right. But you're you right. know these you're things, right? You're right? right. Like, yeah. uh, you know, so, okay, so this is, this Speedy, is, one, the of classic your, this is one of your favorites. I actually, what do you think own, I actually don't own this exact model. I own um, the, you know, the, the Alaska Project version of this. Which ah, is, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so yeah, so, cool. Yeah, so that's the one. They're so, so I, expensive. They're dear. Uh, are they? I think so. I, I well, I mean, I I bought mine from Omega, um, mm. and it was the last one they had in the U.S. So, wow, that just a, says it all. But I love that watch. So it's you know it's the same watch, same case, same bracelet. Um, mm. You know, I told Omega a couple years ago, and they've clearly not taken my advice. I said to them. What you guys need to do is you have to make this decision that the Speedmaster, this particular one, mm. the Moon Watch, stay at a certain price and you don't raise it. Charge three thousand bucks for it. Make it like the Gateway Nice Watch. Yep. Make all your other ones more money. You know, you can tell people, yep. oh, it costs yep. more because it has a fat sapphire crystal or it has this automatic mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But keep mm. this basic one. At three thousand bucks, and, and make mm -hmm. it like a reason, make it like a, a, a statement, a testament. And mm. every single time somebody buys one, Omega should donate a little bit of money to some charity to help. I don't know, kids become astronauts or something, right? Yeah. Just something where it's like you know, giving back but, to the whole romance of like being an astronaut. Like celebrate that. Like that was awesome. Mm. That's what they should do. They should do that. Three thousand bucks, basic packaging. 
doesn't have to be a crazy. Make it like your entry level. Because mm-hmm. what Omega can do is they can be the nice classic sports watch that everyone gets the moment someone in their life can afford it. I reckon this is the case because this watch here is just, I think, you know, when you're talking about first decent watches, I think this is it. What do you think? Yeah, or this could be your only decent watch. I mean, this is a it, look. It's, it's, it's a cool watch. It's a you cool watch. I call, watch? I call the Speedmaster the ultimate dad's watch. And the reason I call it that is this. Ah. One, it's super practical, right? Nothing about mm. it says show off. Nothing about it says, like, I want attention. But it does say, I like a well-made machine. It does say, I value performance. But you know you what know? I said to my dad? I said, you should get one of these Amiga Speedmaster. Man on the moon. You know what he said to me? What? I gave it to him to hold. He goes, he, he puts it up to his teeth. He goes, this is a plastic glass. He goes, this is plastic. I said, yeah, that's right. It's vintagey. He goes, oh, it's not sapphire. Okay, that's complaint one. Complaint two is, oh, it doesn't have a date. And then complaint three from my dad was, oh, it's not automatic. You got to wind this thing every day. That's what my dad said to me. Oh, hold on, hold on. Omega has has solved all of his problems. I know, it's called a coaxial. Listen, I have, you know, I have a few Speedmasters. I have, um, you know, I have the new Mark II, which I think is awesome. Oh, they're so cool. Yeah. That's actually, really, is, is, is that the new Mark II with the column wheel chronograph in it? Uh, does it have a column wheel chronograph? No, it's the 3130 or something like that movement. Okay. Um, it's, a, it, it's a coaxial one. I don't, it's a col- I, don't remember, I don't think it's a column. I don't even know. It's a it's a it's a great chronograph. I love that watch. They, they that's like they that, put that so many movement and watches that movement. That is such a cool. I love this. The the Mark II was so it was you know I I don't know if you know this like what happened was you know the story don't you? The original Speedmaster came out in the fifties, late fifties, right? Fifty seven. Fifty seven. And then what happened is NASA used it. They went to the moon. Then then the guys at Switzerland thought we're really important. They came back to NASA saying, hey, guys, we've just updated it. We've got the Speedmaster Mark II. We want you to – here you go. Here, here's 10 of them for testing. And NASA told them to piss off. <laughs> they said, we've already certified one. Our budget's been cut. Goodbye. And these poor Swiss guys. Oh, but, but, but that's good enough. They, they never – they put such effort into the Speedmaster Mark II and it flopped. And, and know, I just feel sorry for these Swiss guys. And and the other watch, which is like that, is the, the Flightmaster. The Speedmaster Mark II and the Flightmaster, they should be classic, iconic watches, except they're unloved now, really, aren't they? Um, they have lovers. Um, look, I mean, at the time, they were, quir- they were quirky as all hell. When they came out... Mm. They were the flight master was never never considered not quirky. It was functional mm. Mm. and it was the tool. Mm. It was kind of like you ever seen those weird looking tanks and like, oh, it's weird looking because it has this armor, it has this cool weapon. You're like, okay, it's okay that's weird looking because it does something cool. But today, because everyone uses, you know, digital electronics, no one like needs something like that. So it has legitimacy because it was Omega's like best effort. Like, well, these different colors are so that you can reference the different hands easily. So it has better legibility. Like, we don't care if it's ugly. You could read it really well. And they were right. It was really good at yes. being able to be easy to read. It didn't exactly look great with a suit, but. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Fun. And it was manual wind. Yeah, there was that. Race, so it, had, it had issues. It had issues, but it was a, it was a tool. So I think that. They're always respected as an Omega, but they were never design icons. Like the original, mm. the original Speedmaster looked better. It didn't perform as well. Probably wasn't as durable. You know, the, the Mark II was probably superior in any number of ways. But these days, we're just style whores. I mean, sorry to sorry to say it in a silly way. I am too. But like, we don't wear stuff that isn't pretty because we don't need to wear stuff that isn't pretty because there's too many really pretty options. Yeah. How many watches do you have, Ariel? Yourself? I don't know. Lost count. Okay. Very, very good answer. 30, 40, 50? Look, I've been doing this for years. I mean, I I trade watches. I 
you know, sometimes yeah. I'll do a project for a brand and, and they'll pay me in a watch or sometimes yeah. brands don't want watches back. That they review. We don't re require that, but you know, they, yes. they say here, you reviewed it. We can't sell it now anyways. It's not new. And I'm like, thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I get one. I do buy watches from time to time. I mean, I think, I think it's fair because people are like, oh, you get watches for free. And I'm like, you know what? I have to work pretty goddamn hard for every single watch I've ever no. got for quote unquote free. You are the A-list celebrity in the watch world. You are always A-list in my book. I tell you that now. You deserve every damn thing you get there, Ariel. Thank you. Tell me this. Do you think yourself, let me ask you this, right? The funny thing is, is that in this day and age, right, we've become so, I think we are so wealthy. Like in my dad's age, going back 30, 40 years, to own one good watch was a huge achievement. Nowadays, people have collections. I remember when I got my first Rolex, I got an Explorer 1 in 1990. I gave my old watch to my dad because what would I possibly need two watches for? You, you know what I mean? Like, like collecting watches, why would you do that? Let's ask and, a question. Let's ask, let me ask you a question. Hmm. Let's, let's give that example. Um, yeah, that generation probably wasn't collecting watches. But what what were they taking the same kind of disposable income and and putting it into? I, I don't know the answer. Maybe you do. Well, I mean, they used to collect, like going back in time, they would collect stamps, wouldn't they? That was very cool to collect. Stamps. Yes, people collected stamps. A lot of and people, people did. And the I wife... think I've actually inherited stamp collections, and I never understood what they were all about. But apparently, I've had family members that thought it was damn cool enough to spend a lot of years doing it and women would collect cutlery like you know really good china sets cutlery like knives no sorry sorry i mean like like the the dinner set you know the 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 actual you yeah, the dinner sets there yeah, they'd collect silver silverware silverware yes the cutlery but also the dining the fine china they collect the china did you did you inherit collections of china I've actually bought collections of China, which I've suddenly realized are absolutely worthless today because you can't dishwasher it. And you, wait, so you've, you've, you've prospectively purchased China. I, I wanted a China set when I was in my twenties. I wanted nice quality China, but like a tea just, set, like tea and stuff like yeah, that. Like a dinner set, you know, like, like a plate, a saucer, a cup, you know, it, like the type of stuff that someone would get when they get married. Right? I love gay men. You know this, Ariel, don't you? I love gay men. I, I have I have many things in common with different ergonomics, uh, different demographics. I mean, gay men are also men. So by definition, you will have some stuff in common with them. Yes. And I, I, I got to tell you, I, 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 um, yeah, I, many things like, like, uh, let me give you an example. Hey, look, I, I like using a nice cup and a nice knife for sure. I've, I've just, you, I, you know, it's like, here's one of those things, right? <clears throat> I know that I need to put my disposable income in some areas. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is I'll rent <clears throat> fine China. And here's what I'll explain. Mm -hmm. I'll go to a nice restaurant and I'll get a meal. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I'll get to rent the experience using the fine China. I look, I'm like yeah. you, if I sit down at a restaurant and there's like a crappy fork, I'll be like, Oh, really? It's a crappy I, fork. I, yes. I, Ikea at a place like this? Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Let me so tell you this. You. Like, did you ever have toy train sets when you were a kid? Um, I had, I was, like, toys were getting a little bit too, um, a little futuristic by the point I was a kid. So it had been like the space train set, but I had basically the equivalent of thereof, yes. See, no one collects train sets anymore. Like, the vintage Lionel. Those, that collector is dying out. You, you, you know why? No one has room to build a model train set anymore. That's a good point. Now, I wanted to ask you, do you think watches could ever go the way of train sets, Mo of fine train. China? Like they're just yeah. the market. People don't collect them. Are, are these Weeses going to disappear and not have the young? Let me tell you what happened. I got a letter from a, a fan this week. He said he went to a drinking establishment. He said many people, 20s and 30s, were there. No one had a wrist watch on their wrist. No well, wrist watches. They're using their iPhone to tell time. They're, I have a phone. theory. I have a theory. You want to hear my theory? No, you this tell is me. the theory of why certain types of hobbies um, go out of style for men. Yes. 
Okay, so like modern trains, building them, collecting them, assembly them, that would be a hobby. Now this sounds a little bit crude and I'm sure it, it's deeper than this, but this is a rule that I found actually, you know, dictates a lot of our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's basically this. Model trains never helped and possibly hurt guys from getting laid. And so any type of hobby that directly inhibits a man's ability to get laid by, you know, his wife or any other, anything else um, is going to go out of fashion because that's, that's sort of like a, a, of prime value to a lot of guys, right? Like that we have certain types of needs on the hierarchy and like getting that done at least once in a while is up there. So like, there's nothing uh, really sexy about model trains right now because trains aren't like hip and no one wants to be like a train engineer. Like maybe you could be an adult male getting away, like putting together model rockets. Cause yeah, like rockets are exotic and we don't really like have a, a mastery over, over that. We're, you know, we have, we, Mm -hmm. space flight. We're just beginning our adventure there. We still have a yes. long way to go. So, okay. But like trains, you're like, okay, so you're just into old stuff because there's no growth market in trains, right? It's just kind of like an old thing. Mm -hmm. So women find things appealing if there's sort of a, a ability to profit from it. So guys were spending money in model trains and not, not, it wasn't assisting their sexual fitness levels. I and so see. I think it went out. Watches can help. Cars can help. Hobbies that are in today for guys, exercise can help, right? A lot of the things guys are into today have some type of direct correlation with, with looking more attractive or being more attractive to the opposite sex, who, who, whoever it is they want to attract. Mm. You know something? I tell you this now. I was in a bordello in Thailand wearing my Patek Philly 5035 annual calendar. Did you say bordello? Go, go, bar. Is that what they're called? Go go bar, okay. Go go bar, okay. I haven't been to Thailand. I don't know the, the terminology that's used. Okay, well, it's a bordello, okay? It's a brothel. Okay, okay. It's a brothel, okay. okay? Okay. And I said to this woman there, who I quite fancied, I said, "What do you think of my watch?" Oh, it's okay. I you you asked her. You asked yes. her. About yeah, your I was watch. doing market research for the channel. Okay. I said, "What do you think of my watch? It's a Patek Philippe five zero three five. This is the first, the world's first annual calendar." You said that to her. Yes. Okay. Not that uh -huh. she understood English. She said, "How much? How much? How much? How much you pay? How much you pay?" She was asked. So she immediately wanted to know what you paid for the watch. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. She got to the point. Yeah, you're not mucking around in these places. And uh, she she was a very I, – I, I did I, – I, I still remember her very Is that fondly. what the accent sounds like? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's near enough. It? <laughs> and I said to her, I said to her, this watch, this watch, I said to her, I said to her as nice as I could, I said to her, I said – I gave her a price in Thai baht. I said, this watch here is – about 650,000 Thai baht. 650,000 Thai baht. I have Should no we... idea what. It's about. How much is. It's about 20,000 US. Okay. okay. It's a 5035. You know, the, the first incarnation of the annual calendar. Yeah. She, she said, looked at me, looked at the watch. She said, no, I not believe. I not believe. That's what she said to me. Wait a minute. What is it? What? But. Why would you lie to her about that? And what would you have to gain? Why would I lie to her? That's exactly it. I said, why would I lie to you? I said, I'm telling you, this is what it's not I like not believe for the watch for service. I not believe. So it didn't actually help me at all. Well, maybe it was your approach. I mean, you did. You, you I think an important rule is let the mm. woman bring up your watch in conversation. Mm. Like never bring it up yourself ever. Do you think Patek helps you at all in that sort of thing? Look, I think, I think confidence helps you. And mm -hmm. if you're confident, someone mm -hmm. who's with you, who's interested in you, wants to know what you like. So I think, I think if I lost thirty kilos, that would help me more than wearing a gold Nautilus. Look, you know what? That might give you more confidence than a gold Nautilus. Yes, it's true. But I'm just saying, you know, like all yes. things. If you no, no, if I, I understand. That, if someone understand. has like worked out, you know, figured out the wardrobe, figured out the haircut mm. and it's like wait a minute something's missing the watch is like not the first thing you do to make yourself more attractive but it's it's on the list 
I got to tell you something interesting. I was reading a book called Barefoot Investor. It's, a, it's an investment book, right? And what it says is everything we buy is virtually rubbish in 10 to 20 years' time. Probably like we buy will. a sofa, we buy a sofa, it's not going to last forever. Eventually the springs will get going and the leather will go funny. It's cheaper to replace it than to repair it. It's out of fashion anyhow, right? But okay. you think about it. What can men buy? What can men buy which doesn't go out of fashion? What Real can estate. a man buy? Real estate. Real estate. But, I mean, something you can have, hold in your hand. You can hold, like, dirt in your hands. I'm I'm being a smart ass. Um, no, but you know what I, I know what you're saying, but what can you have that doesn't be worthless? Like trendy clothes, after a couple of years, you're not going to fit in them anymore. I mean, look, I mean, do you want me to get like all like, you know, a car, very, you know, you, you buy it you, 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 and say that, you know, true, true happiness is the absolution of, you know, de desire for things, you know, like. The only thing men can have is a watch. A watch is something that is timeless, that will always be cool. I mean, look, it is. I agree with you. Watches <clears throat> have endured a lot of times challenging their coolness and always came out still cool. Like, I don't know. I don't know how watches do it, but men, it, they've gone through so many differences in styles and politics and income levels and, and throughout it all. Watches to so many people are still cool. Like that is some serious staying power. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's it's very very true indeed. And um, I I gotta tell you, you know, I I um I really really do agree with you. I think there's nothing on this planet which men can have. What can we wear? We can't wear gold chains. We look a bit punsy. We can't. What can we have? What can, what things can we have that? Even a briefcase. They're out of fashion now. No one, you're not allowed to take briefcases aren't what they used to be. Um, the only it's, thing it's challenging. Why, but look, here's this is the thing. We used to have a cigarette lighter. We don't smoke anymore. Oh, you smoke. Oh. We used to have a cigarette case. Oh. I'm gonna have a theory. I'm gonna have a theory on this, okay? You're yes. right. We don't have much. But yes. I think the real the real thing to remember is we have some. So by having not that many things to, I'll just call it accent our personality, mm. the watch gets extra attention. That's why we put so much thought into it because it has to say so many things at the same time. Because you're right, our shirt, our pants, our shoes, it could all just be practical or utilitarian or silly or fun or whatever. It, it could be confusing to, um, to people wanting to know information about us, about who we are. But a watch if chosen properly, can send just the right kind of message and just the right kind of message depending on your mood as well. And that's something that really nothing else is able to do. Plus, it never looks like a useless bobble because it actually does something. Take away a watch's ability to do something useful like tell the, tell the time and it loses all of its appeal. Ah, very. I, I, I think you, you've hit it on the, the head there. Ariel. Now, Ariel, I got to tell you, this has been a fantastic interview we're doing here. What I'd like to do is take a break. Okay. Here. We're taking I a break. I want to take a toilet break. Okay. Do you want to keep this going? So we're going to cut. No, we're going to cut this. We're going to kill it. And I'm going to send you a new link for a new show. Does that sound okay with you? Yes. So I will close this out now. Okay. So I'm going to stop this broadcast. Okay. And I'll, I'll be back in.